back Marshawn Olanio here thank you so much for returning and if you are someone who is new new to me new to the channel then welcome 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 my name is Marshawn Olanio and I am your favorite relationship strategist I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard understood and appreciated now we are going to continue our series of behaviors of now this particular video is about the behaviors of liars what does the behaviors of liars look like and why it is important for you as the person who is engaging or even opening up your life opening up your love life specifically to that person to walk through the door what should you be looking for and why is it important to pay attention to the things that people say and their actions as well because this is how you will determine the foundation of your relationship all right so let's jump into some of the behaviors of liars and again why it's important for you to pay attention to these things prior to you getting into a committed relationship and i know that this can be a thing right because sometimes we get into relationships and let me back up and say the majority of people that get into relationships have no idea of the things that they need to watch out for. So this would be one of the red flags that you should be watching them for. So without further ado, the first thing that you need to pay attention to when it comes to liars is that they contradict their stories. The longer that he or she speaks about a specific thing. So for instance, you ask them where they were at last night right you get one answer a few days later maybe you really did forget or you could be trying to trap them up whichever it is right you ask them where were you at a couple nights ago I, I can't remember and then they say something different right and then or they might say the same thing but then give you a different reason why they went to that place or hung out with that person right so after a while the things that they say starts to contradict the other thing right the story no longer is the same anymore for whatever reason right it's just because they lie all the time right the second thing that i want you to pay attention to is when it comes to chronic liars really right is that they are overly dramatic or have long stories for no reason at all like it's kind of like they're trying to um cover up their tracks right to make this story believable really to themselves first, right? Which is why the story becomes so long and unnecessary and literally leaves you scratching your head like, why do we even go down this rabbit hole? Like, I don't even feel like we should have went down this rabbit hole, right? So their stories are just long and dramatic for no reason at all. The third thing to pay attention to is that a liar will study your weaknesses and use them against you later on. So you know how sometimes you're feeling like, okay, I need to open up. I need to become more vulnerable. And it's not that you shouldn't become vulnerable, vulnerable to your partner, but you really do have to be conscious and aware of who you are opening up your heart to, right? Because we really do need to protect our hearts from the people that do not deserve them, right? And so you're here today because you're trying to figure out what does it look like when I'm dealing with a liar? Well, this is one of the things that a liar will do and use against you later on. Your vulnerability. You open up, you share something that was really deep in you. You felt like you were connecting with your partner. And so you divulge that information. And then at a later date, when you're feeling weak or when they want to control the situation and or yourself, all of a sudden they're bringing up this horrible information that you trusted them with right and part of it is your fault because you didn't use your god-given discernment in order to understand who you should become vulnerable with so part of it is your fault right we have to acknowledge when it is our fault so you have to acknowledge that part of the reason why he or she is being nasty is because you didn't use your God-given discernment in order to open up your heart and divulge sensitive information to that person. But the second part of that is, of course, it is the person's fault who is being nasty, being mean, trying to control the situation and or yourself when they're really trying to get you back in line. And so they're doing that because they want to make you feel weak. They're doing that, again, because they want to control the situation or even the outcome. 
of what's actually happening. And so part of it is your fault, as I mentioned, but definitely part of it is absolutely the fault of the person that is saying this thing or bringing up this thing, throwing it back into your face because they want you to feel a certain type of way. And that type of way is usually not a healthy way. So they're studying your weaknesses and then they will use them against you later on. So number four is that a liar lacks empathy, meaning they cannot connect with your feelings. Um, they just can't connect with your feelings about the lie. Uh, not about the lie, excuse me, because of the lie. They just can't connect with you and your feelings, right? They lack the empathy. They, they, um, they cannot f see themselves in your shoes in any way at all, right? So they lack any empathy at all. And that can suck when you're in a relationship with someone like that. And it's because they're trying to keep the spotlight off of themselves and keep it on you because they don't want you to really understand that they have their own weaknesses. They want to keep it on you, the spotlight, so it's not on them, right? Because here's the thing, hurt people hurt people, right? So usually liars are hurting in some form, have picked this up because they were lacking something, was they were not receiving something, earlier in life usually is when things like this start right and so then they just feel like this is something that they have been accustomed to doing they've pretty much pretty much perfected it by the time you and you and him get together in this instance right and so now you're dealing with his baggage his past lying is definitely about his past him trying to get his way maybe it was a survival technique and now he he i'm saying he but definitely as, as i mentioned earlier this could be a guy or a girl right so i'm not going like men do this no both parties can do this you just have to realize who you are dealing with right so that's number four the fifth thing is that listen liars are quick on their feet because they don't want to get caught up in the drama they don't want to get caught up in being wrong or being um literally um what's the word i'm looking for found out they don't want to be found out so they have to be quick on their feet to either flip the story on you or to change the subject or to just not answer the question and so not answering the question it literally is the changing of the subject or making it about you right turn flipping things turn it around or just being quick on their feet just period with a response maybe they're trying to get a reaction out of you because again they're trying to get the spotlight off of themselves they want to put it back on you they don't want to own up to their responsibility they don't want to take any blame it's all you so that's what they keep it the sixth thing is that whenever you ask them a direct question they avoid the question again that goes back into um, flipping the script and um, uh, making it about you or, or, or turning the story into I did this because you did that, but still never giving you a straight answer. And so you know how sometimes you ask a direct question, like, where were you at? Where were you at tonight? Or I called you and you, you, you didn't answer, right? And it's always a long drawn out story for no reason about why they didn't keep their word in this, in, in this instance or whatever it is, right? But they're quick on their feet, they avoid their questions and they don't want to be found out as the bottom line. He or she does not want to be found out. So they avoid questions at all cost. The seventh and final reason or thing to look for in liars is to have an understanding that he or she is really dealing with low self-esteem in some capacity, which is why they feel that they need to lie because it's a mask that they are that they have been dealing with. Most people that are chronic liars or just liars in, in any capacity, they have been perfecting this skill and crafting it out for many years because again this may have been their survival technique in some form and so really you have to think about their root cause why and what made them start lying from the beginning now you don't have to discover this you don't you have the right to walk away and not deal with it but in order to build a healthy relationship because each of us are walking into the relationship with some type of baggage. This is lying, right? Not to say that it's right. 
But if you really want to build and work upon the relationship, that this is something that you need to find out what the root cause is so you two can develop and create a beautiful, blissful relationship and not one that's built on lies. And you have to understand that living with or being in a relationship with a liar, a lot of the things that you thought your relationship and or marriage was and is about usually is also a lie because it's built on lies and anything that's not built on the truth will crumble and fall now if you are dealing with something like this and you would like some help definitely go ahead and reach out to me look down in the description box below and look for my link to get on a free coaching call or you can send me an email at marshawn at marshawnolanio.com i love you guys there's nothing that you can do about it and i will see you in the next behaviors of video bye now